so much. And uh, after, I think uh, I was writing today that we need the secrets and the mantras of anti-aging. And I think one of the biggest secrets in the mantra today is being able to sing to your heart's content, to be able to really sing what you really believe in and to give voice to the passion that you have. In it. And I think all the people who are over here have already got the anti-aging secret and mantra and that is what they've shared with everyone. So with that, we start a very, very important session. This is not only for the middle-aged people, this is not only for the people in the 60s and 70s, it's also for the young girls. It is also for those in the 30s and the 40s because they need to know how they need to lead their life so that when they reach the age of 60 and 70, they're still as youthful. So with that, uh, I will just go on to my press. No, I have just put something down wrong. So with that, we start the today's session and so that's my screen. We're going to be talking basically about the anti-aging secrets. This webinar is a culmination of many groups coming together, of which it is the Delhi Gynecologist Forum, which has actually been formed by our Secretary General, Dr. Sharda Jain. The life, the force within this is also infused by Madam and her enthusiasm by the Anti-Aging Foundation, and also by the Delhi chapter of the IMS. So I would like to start with this beautiful quote by Sophia Lauren. There is a fountain of youth, and this fountain is in your mind, in your talents, the creativity you bring to your life, and the lives of the people you love. When you learn to stab this source, you will truly have defeated age. And age has no bar. Youthfulness has no bar. And thus, we are here not to defy age. We are here to defeat age and to do so with dignity and with grace. With that, I invite the chairpersons for the first talk. Dr. Shadhan, just the chairperson of this particular talk, she is basically the life, the person who conceptualized and the person who motivated us to have this particular webinar today. So, Madam, maybe I'll uh, come back and I'll just um, do on today. So, the second chairperson with us is Dr. Archana Varma. She was the vice president of the Foxy of the North. And she's one particular person who has actually paved her way herself. I have seen her over the last 10 years, how she has moved from the president of Gogs to become the vice president of Foxy. And she's playing a lot of role nationally to increase the awareness, being the head of the public awareness committee. And I think, uh, she was on the way traveling, but she did say that she's going to log in today, and I hope she will be there with us soon. And other, the third chairperson is, going to, is Dr. Sangeeta Gupta. She is the ex-HOD of ESI Basai Dharapur uh, Hospital, and she's the vice president of the Delhi Gynecologist Forum. She's yet another person who I would say I have seen her as a senior. When I was a postgraduate, she was my senior resident. And so many years, I feel she has not changed. She's just the same, with the same passion, the same enthusiasm, and the same dignity. With that, I would request Dr. Sangeeta Gupta to introduce Dr. Ambuja. I will just get her. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so, uh, welcome, Dr. Uh, Professor Ambuja. Yeah. And uh, as uh, she is retired professor and HOD, Obstetrics and Gynae Department, Osmania Medical University, Hyderabad. She's a visiting professor, uh, Savita University, Chennai. She's Madam, India, uh, all India Vice President. I'm so small in front of all, in front of all, Madam, because you are all so well-learned people. Don't read, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, Madam I'm just going to tell you the story of Madam Ambuja. Madam Ambuja, Madam Ambuja, Madam Ambuja, and that your Ma voice is not clear. Is it okay? Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you Hello? very well, ma'am. I think Dr. Sangeeta is on the road, so we are not able to hear her very well. Hmm? So, very well, very well. Okay. Okay. I would just like to add one thing about Dr. Sangeeta. Yes. That yes. she's yes. the president of Indian Menopause Society. Yes. Yes. Under, her, yes. under her leadership, the Indian Menopause Society has all come together as one 
and the way she talks with such a simpleness with such humbleness she's been able to take all of us together and it's indeed a pleasure to have you with us today so the stage is yours hello yes ma'am hello we can hear you yeah uh, thank you very much everybody for inviting me for this important topic and, and i am so happy and excited to meet with you all and uh, especially dr sharda jain always i met her i am really uh, very much impressed with her uh, talk always and uh, so happy to be with you all on this uh, day jyoti bhaskar you are so nice always uh, mean uh, very i can say very cordial and homely calling everybody and then calling me and telling the what are the updates and all it is so nice today's topic really it is very close to my heart always and uh, everybody you know they they feel like and they want to look young every time whether you are uh, uh, very young or uh, 16 years age you feel that you should be 8 years 40 years still you feel like 30 years really when i joined first as an assistant professor in usmania medical college i was young only 28 years old i was thinking that 40 years person is very old i am very young but you know when i reached 40 i was thinking no 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 i am not old 50 is old 40 is still young like that everybody feels that they they it is a wish for everybody that they should uh, be looking young and feeling young and recently we had a alumni meet of uh, ours after 50 years i was really heartened to see many of my classmates who are really ailing with diseases and somebody are on wheelchair somebody were not there always uh, and see we all were compared the old uh, uh, when when we joined medical college with the present day uh, uh, posters almost 90% have changed and everybody was uh, looking old or something like that one of my classmate who married my own classmate she could not even recognize her husband on the uh, in, uh, window when we focused that's what the thing that is what is happening if you don't take care of yourself so what are the evolving concepts how to be young and more life to mid life how to add that's what is the thing this is the photo recently we had uh, last year i am scan that is done in uh, varanasi where you see everybody is almost above 50 you can say 90% are above 60 are they looking like that absolutely no they are all looking very young for me though it is like that i feel why see they are all very happy they are all very active doing their work uh, maybe that is the secret of uh, their uh, lo looking young most of the people you would have recognized i am not going to the details she is my mother she is 90 years old i am proud to say that still she is keeping herself very active sometimes she enters into the kitchen to prepare special dishes also and uh, uh is why like that i asked memory you cannot compare her memory to me also because she is so mindful of everything so the question is can science stop aging turning 60 looking 40 can you feel like 60 20 that's what is the reversal of aging is this possible the it is not possible because the effects of aging can be reversed but not the age to say what is aging it is getting older aging is declining ability to respond to stress loss of viability and increase in vulnerability what is possible is ways to reduce or reverse the effects of aging but not reversal of aging because human beings have got abide by certain rules that's what is the human growth curve god has created this 
all the living organisms on the earth, what he made, created God is, the function is reproductive function. The growth will take place once the reproductive function is over, it starts declining and so it leads to the senescence. That's what is the thing uh, happens. So, is is a factor that is inevitable. Everybody knows it. But don't worry about getting old. Worry about thinking old. Why do we talk about the reversal of aging or feeling healthy or anything? Because nowadays the female expectancy is increasing. All of us know. And there is a quantum jump. In 1940s, it was 35 to 37 years was the life expectancy. But now it has gone to 72 years. Means in India, more than 140 million women are there over the age of 50 years. Means all the communicable diseases are becoming more. Maybe because of the age factor. Maybe because of the estrogen deficiency. Whatever is said and done. It is the health of a woman is suffering. So it is our duty to see that we give healthy life to the people. All over the world, you see that India in 2015, it was under 10% of the people above 60 years. By 2050, it is going to be above almost 30%. Means so much of change in the population is world is getting older. The meaning of it is all the non-communicable diseases increase as we age. Everybody wants to look young and feel young. You know, in Augustine, Florida, uh, there is something uh, called the Fantasy Lake that is there, Fountain of Youth. Of course, I visited, but not I taken a bath here. And when they say that if you take a bath into this, they are definitely are going to be young. If it is going to be so simple, everybody will make a one more trip to USA and take the bath. But it is not today's concept. Even in the days of uh, um, in Mahabharata, where Krishna and Satyabhama, they went to Indra's uh, place to steal Parijata um, tree. Because if, uh, whoever has got that Parijata tree, they are going to be young. For eternal youth will be there. That was their so, the goal of this, uh, all this thing is, we want to increase the health span, not the lifespan. That is the goal of it. This is not just a matter of how many years we can live, but how well we can live the rest of our life. That's what is the healthy aging, but not the reversal of aging. Now, today's uh, world is evidence-based medicine. We cannot stop aging, but we, that is what are the signs of aging, like wrinkles, gray hair, poor physical and cognitive health. But what is possible is reduce or reverse the effects of aging. So what is the concept of today's life or today's uh, meeting is the how to get our mission is smart aging, that is the healthy aging. If you go into the details too, we have Aging, we have chronological aging and biological aging. Chronological aging is the one the child will grow adolescent age and then middle age and the old age that comes. There will be wrinkles on the skin, face, you know, we will not be able to, uh, the height of the patient, all these things. But biological aging is the one that is the senescence that happens. What is that? The... Uh, Evidence-based medicine, I told you that what the scientists they did in Swedish, they published a study in 2013 suggested that aging process is influenced by mitochondrial DNA that we inherit from our mothers. That's what. If the mother survives for 90 years, definitely her daughters are going to survive for such a long time unless they meet with some accident or something like that. And then what science said? The intrauterine anoxia, for example, smoking in the mothers or radiation, if it is like that or anything, they will have the IUGR fetus that predisposes disposes to 
uh, diabetes or cardiovascular disease. This is called the fetal origin of um, maternal disease for fetal origin of the adult disease that comes. So evidence for the genetic aging theory is strong, though it is healthy aging and longevity is largely influenced by our environment. That is what we eat, how much we exercise, where we live and the compounds and toxins we are exposed to throughout our lifetime. So age is only number and how we are going to be healthy is the epigenetic factor, not the genetic factor. Chronological aging, nothing can be done. Every year, blow the candles and age will pass away. But what about the biological aging? What are the hallmarks of the biological aging? Biological aging is depending on two things. One is the genetic factor and another is the epigenetic factor. Mind it, genetic factors is only 25%. And the epigenetics are very, very important. How these epigenetics are going to impact? The one thing that is the cellular senescence, these are the hallmarks of biological aging. I'll just go little into these things so that we, we can understand how important it is about the um, epigenetics. There is the telomere shortening and DNA damage leading to the oxidative stress and immune senescence. These are all the things that's going to happen. First of all, what is this telomere? We all of us, uh, you can imagine the cell it has got the cell membrane, it has got the nucleus, within the nucleus is the chromosome and we have got the uh, mitochondria in between and all the Golgi apparatus and perineal are present in the cytoplasm. So, the telomeres are the pink protective. See, this is the uh, chromosome that is there, the DNA of the human beings will be present here and these pink structures are the protective pieces of DNA material at the ends of chromosomes like the plastic tips and the shoelaces. Telomere prevents chromosomal ends from frying and sticking to each other which could damage genetic information to cause cancers, non-communicable diseases, premature aging and all. Each time the cell divides, we know the cells will divide for the progress of the human being, the growth of the human being or for reproduction to take place. Each time it goes, the length of the telomere comes down. It is like, see, we can imagine the outside if the tree is growing means it will grow, it will have the flowers and it will have the fruits and all. Once that crop is over all the leaves will fall down and the new crop comes. That's what is the uh, God's creation. That's what happens. But in the humans, what happens? All the dead uh, things, that's what is the senescence happens, cellular senescence. That will be accumulated in the human body. Time and again, it will be removed by the mitochondria. Mitochondria acts always like a scavenger in the body. So, normal cells has limited replicative potential and eventually irreversible growth arrest will come. So, see with each time the length of the telomere comes down. The stage comes when there are no telomeres. If there are no telomeres, again it is a damage to the DNA and it, it will lead to all the um, mitochondrial damage and uh, some of the diseases that will take place with that one. And normal cell divides about 50 times. Each time the cell divides, telomere shortens. In short, we can say telomere shortening, that is a biomarker for age-related diseases. Shorter telomeres, early death, and long telomeres of the healthy living. There was one study that was being done where they have seen One minute. They have seen that if a woman is exposed to smoking during pregnancy or drinking during pregnancy and they have studied the telomeres of the child, they have seen what length of the telomeres is reduced and that is the baby in future. They got all the diabetes mellitus 
and all the cancers and all they were uh, they, they were exposed to such a uh, environmental factors that they got into short telomeres denoting that they are uh, not good and lead to they lead to the dna damage that's what is the thing that because of this all these inflammatory factors and air pollution you will like that will damage the dna so mitochondria what happens if the dna is damaged how it is going to act see all of us know the metabolism takes place in the mitochondria every cell has got the mat all the proteins carbohydrates fats whatever you eat that will metabolize in the body so what is the end result of the metabolism either carbon dioxide or h2o will be formed but a three normally also 3 to 4% of the metabolism leads to the reactive oxygen species instead of h2o it will become the h2o2 but not this free radicals or reactive oxygen species are damage all the cells and it is very bad all of us know that so normally a healthy dna if it is present a healthy mitochondria will be there that will scavenge out this uh, uh, unhealthy material that is the reactive oxygen species suppose if mutations occur because of the epigenetic factors in the dna or because of the age the cells are damaged that time also the reactive oxygen species they will be present it will not be removed by the mitochondria that's what that produces the reactive oxygen species which is damaged so mitochondria are power house of energy metabolizes in this process reactive oxygen species form superoxide h2o2 that damages the dna mutation in mitochondrial dna or damage to epigenetics leads to immunosenescence or the immunosenescence that leads to all the damage this because of the immunosenescence all these things are damaged leads to the immunity reduced and all the um, diseases will crop up in the body that's what is the immunosenescence that is decrease in the t lymphocytes inflammation and decrease in immunity and compromised ability to combat bacterial and viral infections poor vaccination response autoimmunity increased morbidity and mortality increased pro cytokines that leads to the cognitive impairment all leads to dna damage reactive oxygen species and the final end result is immune senescence because of the molecular aging that is there the stem cells are exhausted normally also in a young person whatever damage occurs the cells are replaced by the new cells that is through the stem cells here because of the molecular aging damage to the dna the tuckers so stem cells are exist, exhausted in the end the goal of healthy living process is to fight connection between all these things that is the gene expression errors dna damage telomere shortening and um, proteins uh, functioning all these things if you can connect all these things they are the biological hall markers of aging and we can get the healthy aging that is the thing. healthy aging technology technology it cannot change the dna genetics so what is the uh, thing we can do is only tackle the epigenetics promote healthy aging by lifestyle changes many elderly individuals remain cognitively sharp and physically active of course nowadays the elixir of stem cell therapy is coming i am not uh, into stem cell therapy either uh, taking myself or advising others still i am not doing so i am not going to talk about it i will talk about the epigenetic factor you see these people they are all elderly but ruling the countries and why majority of politicians will not develop co cognitive function so always a question for us why men develop de dementia in a short time after retirement 
how 90 years ladies also work in Japan and America. I think all of you would have seen when you go to the malls, especially on Sundays, they'll have something there and they will make it fresh and they'll give it to you. Really astonished and they will come and come on road by driving themselves. So that's that's how they are very sure how it happens. Can biological aging be slowed or reversed? The concept of compression of morbidity was introduced nearly 40 years ago. The concept that biological aging, unlike chronological aging, is malleable, represented a significant breakthrough in aging research. Yes, we do accept that. Reversal is possible by changing gene activity, not gene structure. Aging theory is a process of epigenetics. In humans, it is smoking, environmental pollution, which is a dial gene activities up and down. So when these epigenetics are tackled, definitely there is going to be a good response. As these changes accumulate, muscle weakness, mind slows down, becomes more vulnerable to diseases. That's what if time and again, if they are not removed, and we will see how best we can replace them. That's what is one by the nutrition and another by the physical exercise. Two very simple things which we can do it. And as these changes, four genes that have the capacity to convert adult cells to embryonic like status is called Yamam's factor because Shinya Yamam is a Nobel Prize winner in 2006. He has done it. But still, it has not come out, as uh, Dr. Sharda Jain said, it is not revealed to everybody outside. It is still on the process, not available for each and every person. So, what is now available for us? It is the holistic approach, not one thing. Of course, stem cell therapy is there. Detoxification, fasting and vegetarian diet, exercise and de-addiction, and de-stress, this is very, very important. Ways to feel and look young, all of us did it just now. It is the positive thinking. Stop smoking, stop alcohol. A yearly go for your checkups and yeah, see for your various biomarkers, how good is your thyroid, how used to generate DHEA and all. Cut down saturated fats. Increase the omega-3 fatty acids. It's a gospel by now. Eat less, sir. No red meat. Lose the cake and ice cream. Consume more complex carbohydrates such as whole grains, fruits and vegetables. Stop eating sugars because, of course, when we go for all the marriages and all, it will be so attractive to see uh, the fried foods that will be there, bagara banger and... Uh, um, uh, Hyderabadi masala chole will be there. Um, so so many things attract to things to eat, but try to avoid them because of your age. The healthy fats is salmon and sardines. Help keep oxygen free radical molecules from the damaging your body. So these are all the things. I'm not going into the details because this itself is a very big class. And one more thing add. All the Surya Namaskaras also, everybody knows about it. Only extra thing what I'm going to add is the facial exercises. That's really wonderful to do the facial exercises. Because we are all worried about all the uh, wrinkles on the face, sometimes so awkward and all. Really, if you do the facial exercises daily, yes, it is going to give the results. And physical activity is really important. They have done a study for 13,055, this ICMR study that's being done, where they have seen that how inactivity is there, how much it is there, and how much it is good or bad. In rural male people, female people, if you take, I'm sorry, yeah, 59%, almost 60% of the Rural female or inactive and urban female, it is still more, it is 72% almost they are uh, when, uh, 
are not very active and that is the reason why all the diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cancers or everything are increasing because we are not very active. I'm sorry, one minute, I will just slow down and show this. I, in the beginning, I showed you how nice it is to see people of 60 plus how they are active. This is one of the zonal conferences we had in Hyderabad. See, almost everybody is 60 plus. You see, madam, she is 70 plus. I think you can recognize uh, Kaula and all the others. This madam is 80 plus. You see how uh, active they are and how they are doing. I think this is the what is that necessary nowadays and our future yeah of course our future holds a lot of promise with the stem cell therapy for repair our system and regenerate our system still legally it is not present for all the things only for certain diseases i think it is recognized to you not for everybody i uh, I'm not a fit person to talk about that one. There Why are... to make it full screen? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> there are so many things on the pipeline for uh, a healthy living like stem cell therapy, intermittent fasting, metformin, hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy. I think uh, some of the people are following in big cities this hyperbaric oxygen. I think one of the a dancer who, uh, who died recently. I heard that he was in uh, hyperbaric oxygen every time, only went to give the shows he used to come outside. Even though he was at 60, he was looking uh, 30 years and he was very active because of the hyperbaric oxygen. And ampokines, zine therapy, hormones, govita, and antioxidants, these are all there. So, um, I think if, if I take too much of time, there will not be any time for the question and answers and everybody will get bored if I talk the theory only. This uh, better to talk what we do it. So this lady says I am not old. I woke up, I lifted my arms, I moved my knees, I turned my neck. Everything made the same. That is the creak, creak, creak. I came to the conclusion I am not old but I am crispy. So Life is beautiful when it is in balance. So, balanced food, balanced activity, and balanced diet. This is what is the very, very important thing. More than anything, devotion to your work and laughing and always be happy that itself is a healthy living. Thank you all for the patience listening. And now we can discuss whatever is the thing. I'll stop sharing. And thanks to the Delhi Society for giving me the opportunity to where I am. Am I going to? Uh, no, that's fine. You've stopped sharing. No, okay. How, okay. Do okay. Do I, how do I come back to? I'm here. You can see me. There. <laughs> Where am I? I'm seeing. I mean, maybe at the base, just see there must be a small icon um, at the lower end at the no, dust. You're already seeing. We can see you. Yeah. I, Thanks I a lot, Dr. Ambuja, for such a nice talk, such a good talk. Healthy aging. We are not old. We are crispy, my bone. I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> miraculous what you have said. And we all know that aging is a natural process, it affects everyone all the time. We cannot stop it but we can fight with it. Aging beautifully is real healthy aging. Yes, that's right. Dr. Amuja, when I see the glow on your face, it, it's just <laughs> the beauty everything, you know. You may be yeah. aging, but you know, you I think I am back. And that is what the beauty is. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And my day is done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. It's really very happy to see all of you. Hello, Meenakshi Ahuja. <laughs> yeah. Ma'am, such an honor and pleasure to have you here. I think yeah. with the number of people who've joined in in the seminar, only we have almost 100 people joined in. 
and some people you know i got a message from america from one of the doctors who's traveling who said that as soon as the recording is done please share with me because it's midnight you know at 2 o'clock in america when the lecture comes in but i want to hear this because i'm very interested so i think all of us want to feel and look young i think all of us feel young all of us want to look young and it is a wonderful uh, but i will tell you well. when i asked jyoti baskar about the timing she said only 20 25 minutes or half an hour that's right i, thought, I cannot uh, do more justice because if i start talking about the nutrition and physical oh. exercise that is done every day so i thought i will take up this part of it because you didn't yes. mention me what uh, is the thing you are expecting from me i thought i will ma'am jyoti bhaskar is a big disciplinarian we can't dr talk. Uh, dr muja thank you very much uh, i think you know you it will be a pleasure listening another uh, uh, speaker today and i i think you yeah. will find that uh, she is a living example so dr jyoti bhaskar so uh, thank you so much madam uh, dr ambuja for uh, actually you have really inspired us with all your talks yeah. we have given us a mantra that this is the way you're going to live it in the next next 10 years 15 years 20 years all of us who are in the 50s we're going to really ensure that we can be dancing like all the women over there but now in the society where they 80 or 90 we are going to have our dancing shoes on so with that we move on to the next session where we're going to speak by example thank so, you very much thank you very thank much you with bottom of my heart and i feel it is a honor for me for the next session and that's dr maninder ahuja and uh, she's another one person who has actually led by example and that is why we have her here today with us dr maninder i hope you are there with us so she had been the past president of the ims and uh, at particular present it is her the, she started in delhi that particular enthusiasm among all of us that how exercise is very important to keep your bones healthy and to be able to lead a life which is fulfilling and really um, complete so um, and the other chairperson we have of course is dr minakshi ahuja over here she is the president of the delhi chapter of ims it, she tells to tell us that aging defying age is by your smile by your vitality by your enthusiasm by your passion by the social media by taking photographs and then really smiling and writing so beautifully on the facebook and every social media one life and be joyful and happy so with that dr minakshi i would like you to introduce our uh, person we are really waiting to hear that's dr anita verma and um, we are all very excited definitely to hear what dr anita verma is going to tell us and for her to share her secrets of reversing aging dr anita verma is not only a doctor by profession she joined the construction business of her father some time back she is very very enthusiastic about health and fitness and she also has varied interests like art dr anita has been uh, holding even a diploma in fine arts and dancing of course she is a wonderful dancer and she has crossed all the levels of shamik dabar dancing she is also an enthusiastic gymmer and uh, we are all very very excited dr anita verma the stage is yours unmute yourself dr anita unmute yourself Dr. Anita, please unmute. 